So by now, most of you have heard about the Greater Southern Waterfront, but did you know there are other lesser known hotspots that you should be watching in the Singapore residential property market? Here are five of them. Hi, I'm Ryan Ong from Stack Homes, and we've had a lot of questions lately about what are the best spots to look for property. This is quite an interesting market that we have in 2021 going to 2022 and we think it's worth keeping an eye on these five lesser known areas. Okay, so the first area to look at would be Holland Plain. The URA development plan for Holland Plain is, we believe, uh, actually launched this year in 2021. Regardless, Holland Plain is going to be the site of the Bukit Timah First Diversion Canal. This is a roughly 800 meters stretch and it's being covered under the PUB's Active, Beautiful and Clean or ABC uh, project. Now, once complete, this area is going to become a lifestyle park. It's expected to include sky-rise greenery, uh, hopefully something more interesting than more planter boxes. And for those worrying about uh, flood issues in the future, some 500 million has been spent to upgrade the drainage in these areas. So the old flood worries are mostly going to be set aside once this is done. And other plans include the green routes. These are going to enable residents to get to the King Albert Park MRT station, by the way. There is also the rail corridor nearby, which is Singapore's version of the High Line Park in a way. And of course, there is a park connector itself. Uh, you can still sort of see the signs there right now if you visit. Uh, that's sort of running uh, alongside the Bukit Timah First Diversion Canal. There is also a 1.5 meter footpath at Holland Plain. Again, you can see this right now. This is going to be expanded to a 3.5 meter wide footpath. So that provides room for cyclists and joggers as well. Now, why is Holland Plain interesting? Well, first of all, Holland Plain is situated between Bukit Timah and the Botanic Gardens. So this is what you might call a somewhat pricey high rent area with a substantial green stretch. Right, that makes it very attractive to the kind of buyers who really want a lot of greenery and don't like the glass and concrete that you find in most neighborhoods. And it's a 34 hectare space that can yield around 2,500 homes uh, without still being too overcrowded. Of course, for those of us who want to live near the rail corridor, which is going to become probably a major lifestyle hub, this is a good way to live close to that area perhaps without paying prices as high as you might pay in, say, uh, Bukit Timah proper. So the next area that we want to talk about is Paya Lebar. And when we say this, we know what you're probably thinking. You're probably thinking of Paya Lebar Quarter, but uh, that's not what we are talking about. PLQ is mostly a done deal at this point. Uh, the next part of Paya Lebar that we're talking about is the current location of the Paya Lebar Air Base, or PLAB for short. Uh, PLAB, by the way, is an extremely large space. It's about five times the size of Topayo Town. So when the Paya Lebar Air Base moves out, uh, it's expected to be sometime in the year 2030. It does actually free up enough space for an entire new town. And already URA has plans and vision for this particular area. What we do know for a fact is that there is a runway boulevard stretching some 3.8 kilometers and this stretch forms a sort of a main street that includes uh, office, lifestyle areas, retail, residential and so forth. And of course the interesting thing about uh, the PLAB area is that anything that is built there will form a very useful connecting point between Serangoon and Tampines. Now right now though, if you look at the area around PLAB, uh, you might not be surprised to see that most of it is, well, a little bit boring. It's mostly just industrial, uh, nothing interesting to speak of besides the airbase itself. But uh, we're sure that for many people, once PLAB moves out, this is likely to put them in mind of areas like Jurong and its subsequent uh, transformation. Because Jurong, if you recall, used to look something like that, just industrial areas. Uh, today, it's a retail powerhouse with Jam, JQ and so forth. Besides the uh, obvious benefit of having space for a whole new town there, it might also be helpful to some of the surrounding properties that are near Paya Lebar Air Base. Now, we can't verify any of this just yet, and this is still speculative, but there is some possibility that the gross plot ratio, the GPR, might be changed for some properties near the air base. Uh, that's because without the air base nearby, it does free up, possibly free up, certain height restrictions, allowing some condos to be built a little bit higher, for instance. And of course, in terms of noise pollution, we've heard from both sides. We've heard from people who say 
uh, PLAB doesn't really add to the noise pollution. We've heard from people who say that yes, those planes flying nearby do have a big impact. Uh, if you're in the latter category, well, you'll probably be glad when PLAB moves out and you won't hear the roar of planes anymore. So the third spot to look at is Kampong Bugis. So based on the URA plans, it looks like Kampong Bugis is something of a waterfront area that's at the mouth of the Kalang River. It's around 8.29 hectares and it's expected to yield around 4,000 new homes. In addition, there's about 50,000 square meters of space that is likely to be given over to mixed users such as retail service departments, offices and so forth. Of course, the highlight here is that this entire area is within roughly walking distance to Kalang MRT. It might take around 8 to 10 minutes or so to walk, although we can't confirm that yet. Uh, it is also planned to be a car light area, so you can expect easier walking routes, uh, possibly new underpasses, footbridges and so forth that will probably help access to the MRT station as well. The emergence of Kampong Bugis will be a big boost, we think, to certain existing condos in this area. The Riverine, uh, Kalang Riverside in particular, are quite close to this area. And because Kampong Bugis is bringing in so many amenities, they are going to find those things close to their doorstep as well. Kampong Bugis really continues to build up on the overall development of the Kalang area. There's already a Kalang Sports Hub there and the Kalang Wave Mall. Uh, and coupled with Kampong Bugis adding even more amenities and along with good access to the Kalang MRT area, what you're looking at here is a waterfront area that's accessible and convenient. And it's also nice that they are transforming the Kalang Riverside Park nearby. It's not just going to be uh, transformed with greenery, but there's uh, planned upgrades to keep the water clean as well. So this includes water sensitive features that are going to clean the stormwater runoff before it's released into the reservoir. Overall, we have to say for this area, Kalang has really gone under the radar despite some very substantial improvements to the area. And the inclusion of office space as well as waterfront areas and residential are probably likely to tip investor attention back to the Kalang area sometime soon. Next up is an area that's uh, known for being close to the beach but has long been plagued by accessibility issues. That's the Bayshore area. If you know Bayshore Road, this is an area with a cluster of three condos, the Bayshore, Bayshore Park and Costa del Sol. Now, a lot of the accessibility issues are set to be resolved with the upcoming MRT station. This is overall going to be the largest of the new hotspots that we're talking about here because this overall area is around 60 hectares. It provides for around 12,500 new homes, even on top of the rather large condos there already. And from what we understand, it might include both public and private housing. So the new Bayshore Housing Precinct, which is located next to East Coast Park and the sea, by the way, it is envisioned as a new lifestyle waterfront residential area. It's capitalizing on the greenery and of course the waterfront view here. And the area is also going to be very well connected through the Thompson East Coast Line, the TEL, right? And as a little bit further down the Badot Styles MRT station. From what we've seen of the plans, a lot of the activity seems to center around a sort of a one kilometer main street that's running past the existing cluster of condos there. Apart from the usual, you know, restaurants, shops, which we see everywhere, uh, we understand this stretch is also going to include some essential facilities, uh, namely childcare and elder facilities. Mind you though, uh, Bayshore as it is right now is a little bit devoid of amenities and is mostly really just best known for seaside living. So it may not be as convenient right now as it will be later on. Finally, let's take a look at Pongol. Uh, a little bit strange to be calling a Pongol a uh, hotspot. For quite a while now, over a decade, possibly two decades, uh, a lot of Singaporeans have considered Pongol to be a somewhat ulu area that is best known for cheap housing. But actually, the markets today reflect quite a different reality. In April this year, there was a five-room flat at Tree Lodge at Pongol that sold for 910000 It was only one of 23 flats in a non-mature estate to fetch a price above 800000 uh, And I'm told just even as I'm talking right now, uh, recently there is another loft unit within the same development that may have transacted for as high as 970000 so when Piermont Grand Executive Condominium launched in Sumang Walk, many felt that any price above $1,000 per square foot would be way too high for their area. 
but when Pier 1 Grand did sell out in October this year, the average prices were $1,147 per square foot. So we might be seeing a close to the days when Pongo was considered a very cheap area. So what's driving up prices at Pongo? Why is it a hot spot? Well, the first and most significant change would be the Pongo Digital District, the PDD. Uh, this is going to be a waterfront digital hub and it's going to bring in institutes like the Singapore Institute of Technology, SIT, and it's going to put them in close proximity with many other tech companies that are expected to set up here. This has also caught the eye of some investors, incidentally, who are aware of the Tech at SG program. This is a program that aims at accelerating the entry of key tech workers, uh, helping them to get their work passes quicker and so forth. Now, that is, of course, going to be of interest to anyone near the Pongo Digital District. If you're an aspiring landlord, that means it provides possibly a good catchment area. The second factor is the impact of Watertown. Watertown is an integrated development with a very major retail component. There's a large mall attached to this. So the combination of Waterway Point, Pongo Waterway Park and so forth also adds some other much needed amenities to this area. And overall what you get is a Pongo that's shaping up as both a lifestyle enclave and as an area that may be the Singapore's answer to Silicon Valley. So overall, Pongol is nowhere near as uh, boring or inconvenient as people used to say in the past. So Singapore's property landscape is always changing. Our neighbourhoods are always changing as well. Uh, for more on these areas as they develop, please do follow us on Stacked Homes. And you can also check out more precise details on these areas in our blog. Now, please do remember to like, comment and subscribe. That helps us to give you notifications when something new comes up. And please do give us your questions and comments below. Let us know what are some of the topics that we should be covering next. And thanks again for joining us on Stack Homes.